Okay, so right now we're here on our lane in our pro shop and we're gonna go through several different processes. So the first one that we're gonna work on right now is going to be the PAP, the positive access point. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working with Sean just to get their access points. So this is also a great opportunity for you now because you're on the approach, you're on the lanes with your customer to be able to check a couple of things. So when we're gonna be doing hand measurements, it's good if the bowler's hand is supple and warmed up. So obviously having them take a about five to ten shots is going to loosen up those joints and warm up that hand and also it enables you to see how they put their hand in the ball and if there are any problem areas that you might want to address with the fit so this is a good basic way for you to like go in kind of incognito and check out your bowler without you know having them under the microscope so we'll go ahead and we'll watch sean here throw a couple shots and then we'll come back and we'll uh, do some work here on the table then stand behind 15. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay, so that's the... Okay, as the ball comes out, we have a fresh ball track on here, so let's go right ahead. So we see here the initial track. We also see one a little bit higher up here that's going to roll over the thumb. So let's go ahead and let's mark that. So what we're looking for is the initial point of release. And what you want to do is you want to try as best as you can to draw this somewhat all the way around the ball. So we still see that there's still some oil over here and this is kind of going this way. So we're kind of drawing it all the way around here. Bow tie's there, so this is coming around up here. Good. So here is our initial ball track for Sean. Now what we can do is we will use several different tools that we will show you how to measure the PAP. The best tool to use is the armadillo. So we're gonna start with that. So what you wanna do here on your armadillo, you have different lines. They will all match up differently to the line that we drew. So you wanna try to find the one that matches the best. And it could also be in between two lines. So right here, looks like it's that dotted line right here. So I'll come here where it says axis point and mark the axis point. So here is our bowler's access point. Now what I could do is just grab a piece of white thumb tape, rip it in half, and pop this on. So now what we're gonna do is the exact same thing that we did earlier with Sean, but now we have an identifying point. So what we wanna look for is that at the release point, as soon as the ball comes off the hand, see where that tape stays still. As the ball will go down the lane, we'll see that tape wobble. We wanna see it for the first rotation. We want it to see it stable. The biggest trap that people fall into when they do this is their eye is immediately drawn to the arrows section of the lane. So we don't want the tape to be fixed at the arrows. We want it to be fixed at the release point. So obviously here we're filming this so we have access to cameras. But fortunately, most of us have one of these in the back of our pockets. So you can easily just go behind the bowler, same type of shot that we have laid out over here, try to mimic that and basically go in slow motion with your phone so you can see if that first rotation, the uh, axis is nice and still. Let's go back to the lanes. We'll give the ball back to Sean. Here you go, buddy. Let's give it another shot. Okay, look good. So did you see, like, so you gotta look for it off his hand. We found out the access point using the armadillo. We just confirmed that it's good. Okay, so in order to measure your PAP, what we're going to be doing in the first place is we are going to be drawing our center line. So for this, you're gonna need a Prosect, um, a span gauge tool. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna go right in the middle of the fingers, right through the middle of the thumb. And this is going to be our center line. What we will now do is determine our grip center. So we will take our span gauge in the thumb and we'll go here, this is about four and a sixteenth. So here I'm gonna go about two, two and a little bit, just on top here. That is our grip center. I will now, from this mark here, I will now draw a perpendicular line. So what I'm looking for here is zero on top and zero degrees here on the rib. And I'm drawing a perpendicular line to the right. So we see here we have a right angle, it's going to the right. Now we have to remove our tape and we will now draw another perpendicular line to the midline, but now intersecting with that positive axis point. So same principle here. I'm putting my zero 
crossing through that line and I'm looking here to see that I am square. And there we go. So we have identified our center line, midline and vertical axis line. And a PAP measurement is based off of the grip center. Basically what we're trying to do is get a horizontal coordinate and a vertical coordinate to get to that positive axis point. So key important point is that it's, it is starting the measurement from the grip center. So from my grip center, I will measure to see. So here I see four and th five eighths across to the VAL. So I will write four and five eighths. And then here on the vertical coordinate, I see that it is about one and five eighths. So I can say here one and five eighths. So my PAP is four and five eighths by one and five eighths up. It is above the, the midline. So very important there to denote the direction. So now what we can do here is on our bowler spec sheet. So here we have Sean, here's his profile page. We can now come in here and we can type in the axis point. So we're gonna go here to five, four and five eighths by, what do we say? One and five eighths up. So that is the process for a, to, to find the PAP and properly measure it. Obviously for a lefty, we will be on the opposite side of the bowling ball. However, the vertical and horizontal coordinates still take. In this case, we had a vertical coordinate that is up. It is possible that it is zero, basically on the midline, and it is also possible that it is down, under. That's why it's very important to denote if it is up or down.